Hello friends and welcome to Hit Bullseye. My name is Manish and this is your weekly dose of current affairs, the bulldoze for the first week of December 2022. Let us take a look at all the important events that have happened in this past one week, especially a lot of important awards and honors have been given away. And one of the reasons for that is that, you know, we are approaching the end of the year and there are so many awards that sort of, uh, you know, outline the achievements in a particular field throughout the year. And that is why at the end of the year, uh, you know, perhaps starting with the Nobel Prizes in October. So October, November, December are the months, but a lot of awards are given away. So let's see all the important events that have happened in this last one week. Starting with the first one. <clears throat> starting with the first one, the chief guest for Republic Day 2023. So, of course, the Republic Day is approaching uh, 2023, 26th of January, and every year we invite one head of state to, uh, you know, to act as a chief guest. But for the last two years, we were not inviting anyone. So let's see who is going to be the chief guest for this year. We have just sent an invite. It has not yet been accepted. Most likely, it will be accepted. Next, India's first integrated rocket facility is going to be set up in a particular state. So we will see where it is going to be set up. <clears throat> Next, PT Usha. P.T. Usha was making news about two months back as well when she was nominated to the Rajya Sabha. Now again, she is in news again for a good reason. We will find out what that reason is. National Gopal Ratna Award. National Gopal Ratna Award, a very peculiar award given to, you know, farmers or, you know, someone who has contributed in a particular field. We will find out what this award is about and who has got this award. Next is the UNESCO Award. United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization gives away various awards. This is a particular award. We will see what this award is about and to whom has it been awarded. So most of it is going to be discussed in the detail. Next, Para Sports Person of the Year Award. Basically, the sports persons of the year awards have been given away, but the most important is the para sports person of the year. So, they can get kisko mila hai para sports person of the year award. Then, gas lighting. This is an interesting thing because uh, this is the word of the year by Merriam Webster dictionary. Okay, so we will see what is the meaning of gas lighting. Then World AIDS Day, on 1st of December, the World AIDS Day is commemorated throughout the world. We will see when it started to be commemorated, what is the significance of this day and some other facts about AIDS. Vijay Hazare Trophy. So this match has been held, the final has been held. We will see which team is the winner and some more facts about it. And finally, Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay NIF Prize 2022 in literature. Okay, let's get started with the first news, the chief guest of Republic Day 2023. So this gentleman over here is the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. So Egyptian president, Mr. Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has been invited as a chief guest for next year's Republic Day Parade. And uh, this reflects India's focus on the Arab world. Now, there are so many news that we have discussed in the last one year. In fact, now we are approaching the end of the year. And this video series that we have been uh, undertaking is about to complete a year because we started it around January this year. So that also is an achievement. And uh, in this past one year, we have discussed a lot of these uh, news which shows that India is increasingly focusing towards the Arab world, whether it is the comprehensive economic partnership agreement with the UAE, whether it is the increased trade volume with Saudi Arabia, whether it is uh, increased diplomatic uh, engagement with Israel and UAE through the I2U2 initiative or the new Quad initiative or whether it is uh, the implementation of India's UPI system or rupee system in UAE. 
So there are a lot many things that have been going on which shows India's renewed commitment and focus towards the Arab world. So this is a testimony of the same, that an Egyptian president has been invited as the chief guest. And uh, Egypt, Egypt is among the nine guest countries invited to the G20 summit under India's presidency. Of course, next year, India is going to be the president of the G20, which is a historic moment for us because this is the first time it is happening. And since Egypt is not a member of the G20, India has invited nine countries other than the G20 members as guest countries. And one amongst them is Egypt. Right? And it will be interesting to see which those other eight countries are because I'm really sure most of them will be from the Arab world. And, it, it, uh, you know, those countries will also show India's, uh, you know, what, what India's interests are in the, in the international arena. So it is a guest country as well in next year's G20. In 2021 and 2022, there were no chief guests because of COVID-19 precautions. Last time we had a chief guest on Republic Day was 2020, Mr. Jair Bolsonaro, the former president of Brazil. Now, even Mr. Jair Bolsonaro is not the president of Brazil. Now, he has changed. You know, now it is Mr. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who is the new president of Brazil. So, hopefully, he will accept the invitation and will grace the occasion at the Kartavya Path. It's not the Rajpath anymore again. It is the Kartavya Path and it has transformed not only its name, it has transformed in infrastructure and it also has a new statue of Subhash Chandra Bose just behind the India Gate under the historic canopy that once housed King George V's statue. So it will be interesting to see these new changes on the Kartavya Path, not only the name, but also in some way the aesthetics and in some way the iconic structure behind the India Gate. And also let's not forget that this was the year when the Amar Jawan Jyoti under the India Gate was, you know, uh, sort of, it was not extinguished, it was merged with the Amar Jawan Jyoti at the National War Memorial, which is just behind the India Gate. So, so many things have changed in the last couple of years and I think uh, the changes are welcome not to judge them. Anyway, next India's first integrated rocket facility. It's going to open in Telangana. It's going to open in Telangana, India's first integrated rocket facility. And uh, it will be the integrated rocket design, manufacturing and testing facility in Hyderabad, okay, so Hyderabad is going to have that, which will have designing, manufacturing, as well as testing of rockets, and it will be developed by Skyroot Aerospace. This year has been iconic, if we talk about, there in so many aspects in fact, but if we talk about the privatization or the achievements of private sector in space manufacturing, uh, you know, space vehicles manufacturing as well as launching because India launched its first private rocket this year, the Vikram S rocket also. So, Skyroot Aerospace, Agnikul Cosmos, these are some of the private companies which are making a mark for themselves and uh, they are, you know, uh, next year they will have to be watched out for. So, Hyderabad based startup incubated at T-Hub launched the country's first private rocket, Vikram S, which is named after Vikram Sarabhai and Skyroot Aerospace became the first privately held company after the space sector was opened for the private players in 2020. So, 2020 was the year when the space sector was opened for the private players and Skyroot Aerospace was the first company that, you know, that, uh, that jumped the bang bandwagon. So, Skyroot Aerospace wants to build high technology, low cost, reliable launch vehicles. Its co-founders are Chandana and Nag Bharat Dhaka. Previously worked with Indian Space Research Organization as rocket scientists for about a handful of years before starting up in 2018. Both these founders of Skyroot Aerospace have had good experience in Indian Space Research Organization, which, you know, which speaks volumes about uh, the kind of venture they have come out with. It will be quite fascinating to see where India's space sector goes from here because it was already doing really well and now that the private sector has been allowed, 
of course with full-fledged uh, regulation so let's see where it goes next news is about Ms. P.T. Usha so last time we talked about Ms. P.T. Usha one of the most well-known athletes India has had in independent uh, you know post independence she was in news because she was nominated to the Rajya Sabha but now she is in news because she has become the first woman to become the president of Indian Olympics Association IOA she is the first woman to grace this particular uh, uh, designation so the Ministry of Law and Justice has announced it on Twitter and she is the first woman president of IOA she is one of the most accomplished athletes in India she has won 11 medals including four gold medals at the Asian Games between 1982 and 1994 she also won four gold medals at the Seoul Asian Games in 1986 so a total of 11 medals of international repute under her kitty she is a well accomplished athlete and the first woman to helm the Indian Olympic Association it's a welcome change women are breaking the grass ceilings in so many fields so sports couldn't be left behind next is the National Gopal Ratna Award so this is given by the Ministry of uh, Animal Husbandry Fisheries and Dairy and uh, the Minister Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Balyan gave the gave away this award to farmers cooperatives and technicians involved in artificial insemination so it has not been given away to any particular individual or any particular organization it has been given away to in general farmers cooperatives and technicians involved in artificial insemination for their exemplary contribution towards milk production in India so this award has been given away for improvement in milk production in India and it was announced during or given away during the National Milk Day. India, there are some important facts you should know. India is the highest milk producer with a 33% staggering 33% contribution to global production. That means one third of the entire world's milk production is in India. Can you believe that? There are 222 cooperatives in the country with over 17 million farmers supplying milk around 2 crore farmers supplying milk through 222 big cooperatives for example Amul is there Verka, Vita there are so many and the National Milk Day is celebrated to commemorate the 101st birth anniversary of Dr. Varghese Kurian known as the father of white revolution so Dr. Varghese Kurian passed away last year and uh, he was known as the father of white revolution in India and he was the one who started Amul that is Anand Milk Union Limited so Anand is basically a village in Gujarat from where it all started the idea that farmers should come together they should pool their resources and uh, you know that the the milk and all the dairy products should be sold in urban areas and the profits should be distributed equally amongst all of them so this started the cooperative movement in India and when it had included a good number of farmers the government realized the transformative potential of this initiative and that's when they jumped in and launched operation flood thereby you know just distributing the good effect of this initiative to all the farmers in India so that is what we celebrate the National Milk Day for the UNESCO award what is this award for first of all now UNESCO gives away so many awards UNESCO maintains so many lists like the World Heritage Site list the intangible cultural heritage of humanity list but this award is the UNESCO Asia Pacific Awards for cultural heritage conservation Asia Pacific Awards for cultural heritage conservation so it has been given away you know the award of excellence for heritage conservation has been given away to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Vastu Sangrahalaya so in 2019 the museum initiated comprehensive repairs restoration and refurbishment of interior exteriors and everything 
and it was established as the Prince of Wales Museum of Western India in 1922. So this year, this particular Sangrahalaya has completed 100 years of its existence. Since 2000, the UNESCO Asia Pacific Awards for Cultural Heritage Conservation has been recognizing the efforts of private individuals and organizations in protecting, conserving and transforming heritage structures. And it is supported by a partnership between UNESCO and NG Tang Fong Charitable Foundation since 2021. So this award is given away every year. This year it is the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya which is a 100 years old museum which might be having some real artifacts related to the life of maybe Chhatrapati Shivaji. That's what it implies. It has been given away this award which is a matter of honor for us. Next, the Para Sports Person of the Year Award. Now, she is Avni Lekhara, and she has been making news, you know, at the beginning of the year also, and now that we are approaching the end of the year again. So, at the beginning of the year, she became an athlete, a para athlete, to get a Padma Shri, and now she has become the Para Sports Person of the Year. That is why she has been in news. So, Avni Lekhara, he, she won two medals at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. She is the Para Sports Person of the Year and Sarkar Talwar, former Ranji cricketer Sarkar Talwar was honored with the Lifetime Achievement of the Year Award. And which awards are we talking about? <coughs> uh, basically, Sports Persons of the Year. These are given away by FIKI, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So, Mr. Sarkar Talwar has got Lifetime Achievement Award. Avni Lekhara is the Para Sports Person of the Year. Shrey Kadya was the Special Sports Person of the Year. Other than these, the Best Male Coach Award has been given to R.B. Ramesh and Best Female Coach has been given to Nonita Lal Qureshi. These are the important awards. The most important, of course, is the Para Sports Person of the Year that has gone to Avni Lekhara. Okay, so next is a very interesting news, gaslighting. Now, I don't know how many of you would have heard about it, but gaslighting is a very awkward word you know where you know once for the first time you hear about gaslighting you would think that this is something about chemical engineering or maybe petroleum industry or something like that but trust me it's nothing like that it's merriam webster's dictionary's word of the year and what it means is and i quote the act or practice of grossly misleading someone especially for one's own advantage. So, if you manipulate someone to your own advantage, you are gaslighting that person. This is called gaslighting. Quite a strange word, 2022 word of the year. When did this word come into existence? It's a relatively new word in the English lingo. 80 years ago in 1938, there was a play called Gaslight. It was written by Patrick Hamilton. So, the plot of the play somehow has this sort of uh, storyline that one person manipulates the other to his own advantage thereby making the victim believe that it is her own fault that is called gaslighting so the the proper definition would do so gaslighting means a form of psychological manipulation so you psychologically manipulate someone usually over an extended period of time that causes the victim to question the validity of their own thoughts. So the one to whom I am manipulating is questioning his own thoughts and beliefs, his own perception of reality or memories and typically leads to confusion, loss of confidence and self-esteem, uncertainty of one's emotional or mental stability and a dependency on the perpetrator. So psychological manipulation to the extent that I am doing, uh, you know, I am manipulating someone to the extent that I am making him believe that it is his own fault. This is called gaslighting. Of course, a very negative word and has a very negative connotation. But the criteria for selecting the word of the year is the number of searches or the, uh, you know, the percentage with which the searches have increased in that particular year. So for this word, the 
percentage was 1740 percent that means last year if people searched about it let's say if 100 people searched about it this time it was say 1740 1740 percent increase in uh, the searches of this word hence making it the word of the year and i think it goes with the trend because most of the words that are coming out this year as words of the year are mostly uh, has ne have negative connotation so we are earlier heard another word of the year by cambridge dictionary and it was uh, anxiety anxiety is the word of the year you know they asked uh, thousands of teenagers in various countries and they saw anxiety as the word of the year which shows that perhaps for the last three years we have seen so many changes in the post covid covid world that mental health has uh, you know there, there are concerns in mental health of a number of people and that's why these sort of multiple negative uh, words and all are becoming the words of the year let's hope this trend dies down sooner than later and we have world aids day on the first of december on the first of december we celebrated the world aids day so aids stands for acquired immuno deficiency syndrome acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or hiv human immunovirus so acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is uh, you know uh, the day is celebrated on 1st of December World AIDS Day this year the theme for this day is equalize equalize according to UN AIDS the United Nations Agency for AIDS this slogan is a call to action that we should try we should start treating the AIDS affected people as equals we should address inequalities and help end AIDS. This day was first designated in 1988 by James W. Bunn and Thomas Natter to get some semblance of control over the pandemic that had claimed the lives of so many people. Initially, it was also a pandemic, you know, just like COVID-19. Not to that extent, but quite bad it was uh, because it doesn't spread through touch so that's why it was not that bad but and you know till people started getting aware about it and what to do what not to do all the sops uh, it was it created a lot of panic among the people so we commemorate this day to raise awareness about it so that its spread can be controlled next is vijay hazare trophy so vijay hazare trophy was won by saurashtra the team of Saurashtra beat Maharashtra by five wickets in, uh, to win the Vijay Hazare Trophy at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, which again is the world's largest cricket stadium. The player of the match went to Sheldon Jackson and the player of the tournament went to Rutu Raj Gaikwad. And this is the team of Saurashtra, the champions who were the winners of the Vijay Hazare Trophy. So Vijay Hazare Trophy is for cricket. And this year, Saurashtra is the winner. These are the only few facts that you should remember. And then we have Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay NIF Prize. So this is given to a particular book or an author. And this year, it has been given to this particular book. You know, this book that you can see over here. The Chipko Movement. The Chipko Movement. Uh, a people's history and it has been written by Shekhar Pathak this is the book so it's about the Chipko movement and uh, written by Shekhar Pathak it was named the winner of the Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay book prize translated from Hindi by Manisha Chaudhary so Mr. Shekhar Pathak wrote it in Hindi and it has been translated to English by Manisha Chaudhary so the book is the Chipko Movement, A People's History. This prize recognizes and celebrates excellence in non-fiction writings. So it is not given for fiction writing, it's given for non-fiction writings on modern or contemporary India by writers from all nationalities. So not necessarily an Indian. It carries a cash award of rupees 15 lakh 
a trophy and a citation. It was established in 2018, so a relatively new prize. It is named after Kamala Devu Chattopadhyay, the institution builder who had contributed significant to the freedom struggle, to the women's movement and refugee rehabilitation and the renewal of handicraft. So Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay is the inspiration behind this award. It was established in 2018, given to for excellence in non-fiction writing, these are the key words, and can be given to a person of any nationality, right? And winners, Shekhar Pathak, the Chipko movement. Now, Chipka movement was an environmental movement, one of the first of its kind in India, which started in Uttarakhand. And at that time, it was not Uttarakhand, it was a part of Uttar Pradesh only. I'm talking about the 1960s or 70s, I'm not very sure. So, a person named Sundarlal Bahuguna started it. Basically, there was a proposal of setting up a factory by cutting trees. And the people who lived in those forest areas, the forest dwellers, they hugged the trees. They sort of glued themselves to the trees to, you know, not to allow anyone to cut them. And when the world got a whiff of such a kind of protest, you know, first they laughed, then they criticized, and then they realized how important it is to save trees. So, even before the 1972 United Nations Climate Change Conference, which happened for the first time, we in India had seen a public movement to save the forests. And now, fast forward 50 years, we are actually understanding the importance of saving trees. We are understanding the importance of uh, nature and how climate change is eating out, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, causing a lot of damages to the world property and world lives and everything. So perhaps uh, now is the time to really appreciate the Chipko movement. That's why this book has been written. Even after 50 years, it remains relevant and all the more so. So this award is a testimony to that fact. Okay, then we have Mr. Prasoon Joshi. Yes, this is the last news that we're going to discuss. So, Mr. Prasoon, Prasoon Joshi, I'm sure many of you would have seen movies like Rang De Basanti, Fana, Tare Zameen Par, all the three movies coincidentally of Amir Khan. Rang De Basanti, Fana, Tare Zameen Par. Most of the songs in these movies have been written by uh, Prasoon Joshi. He's a lyricist. He has also written the script of the movie Bhag Milka Bhag right of Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra and why he's in news because he has been appointed by the Uttarakhand government as the state's brand ambassador he's the brand ambassador of Uttarakhand earlier Mr. Rishabh Pant was also appointed as Uttarakhand's brand ambassador so Mr. Rishabh Pant and now Mr. Prasoon Joshi are the brand ambassadors of the state of Uttarakhand. Right now, Mr. Prasoon Joshi is the chairman of Central Board of Film Certification that we also called, call the Censor Board, right? So, Mr. Prasoon Joshi is the new ambassador of Uttarakhand government. That's it for this week's Current Affairs. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can receive these notifications every week. Also, if you have any suggestions or anything that you want to say to us, do let us know in the comment section. That is it. Till then, it is me signing off. Thank you.